Hi, everyone. I'm here to talk about the road to recovery for live in-person events. Uh, how to view your event program from an adapt, evolve, and accelerate perspective to, to really manage through what is an unprecedented situation. So I'm Patrick Smith. I leave our, lead our global marketing team here at Cvent. Um, we have a lot of people around the world that spend um, many hours each day building Cvent's brand and awareness for our solutions and driving demand for what we offer. So it's a privilege to lead such a great team of marketers around the world. So I think, as we all know, those of us that really love in-person live events have seen major changes. And before we get started, while we really hope the industry recovers quickly, we may be at the beginning of the journey. Not at the very beginning. We've been a, you know, six weeks in, maybe eight weeks in at this point um, to the new normal we're in. But we're obviously looking to the future and excited for when live in-person events come back. But you know, it could be um, you know, a decent period of time until things are back to normal and if things will recover in stages. So it's important to kind of set the, the stage for where we are right now. So at Cvent, you know, we get um, the, the challenge of running a marketing team and program without live in-person events as a key part of that mix. Um, these are just a few of the events that we um, either host ourselves or attend. Um, and it's a lot. You know, we do over 1,000 events a year at Cvent that we're either hosting ourselves or attending. So when that is not happening from an in-person perspective, it's, it's quite a big change. And it's tough out there. You know, what you're seeing here is um, kind of a view into the, the in-person live event program for Q1. And in general, it was, um, you know, pretty robust in that January and February was relatively normal. There were a lot of events that happened. Um, and we went to a lot too, and we had our own events, and, and they went off well, and we in some cases record attendance. Uh, but toward March and the back half of March, obviously things radically changed. But here's where we are now. This is a view of um, you know, our live event program, and you can see that we virtualized almost 85% of the events that we were running. And the events that we were attending, they've either been postponed, canceled, or virtualized too. So um, this is a dramatic shift, a shift unlike we've ever seen before in our industry. So this is what we're all dealing with, and, and let's talk about um, the path forward. We need to kind of reimagine our events program, and at Cvent, we're talking about reconnecting with our attendees. So the first step that we're looking at from our own live event program is how we're managing through their crisis, how we're adapting right now. And then we're going to shift to how we're evolving. And this is about starting the recovery process. And finally, we can't wait for the day when it's about accelerating our event program and applying what we've learned. So I'll talk through these three stages right now and how you can use this as a framework for evaluating your own in-person live event program. So first, we're in this adapt phase right now, and this is managing through a crisis. So the secret to success at Cvent, you know, it's no surprise that we use um, our own software solutions to manage our 1,000 plus live event program. So the good news is when you have control, you can unwind things quickly. You can quickly understand the impact of not having these in-person events any longer. And it's important if you have one system of record that you can look at things like the budget that you're spending. You can track refunds that you're getting. You can look at, uh, because we have Cvent um, connected to our MarTech stack, we can look at what impact on leads will be, be had because we're not having a, a live event program. So um, th this is really important that you have this control. And this is really where strategic, strategic meetings management comes in to, to have that full control over your event program. And a secret to success is flexibility. If you have that system of record, you can quickly pivot to things like virtual events, which we've done at Cvent. So um, it's important to, to really manage through the crisis now by adapting, but the secret is having control over your event program so you can dive in, assess the impact, and quickly move forward with the new reality. So a case in point is IMEX. Um, you know, we all wanted to be together. Um, for this event, it's a landmark event that, that is one of the big events of the year um, that we can't wait for. It's typically a three-day, 14,000-person um, event, and it had to pivot to virtual ASAP. And now here we are at a fully immersive two-day virtualized event. So it's a great example of being flexible, 
on how quickly this event pivoted from in-person to virtual. And another um, organization I want to highlight is CUE, which is a, a CVENT customer. And they transitioned a three-day, 4,000-person attendee event to a virtual event, and they did it extremely quickly. So they were able to move to a virtual event. They were able to host over 200 sessions, uh, create virtual attendee pathways so unregistered people could easily join. Um, they use CVENT's mobile app, Crowd Compass, to keep agendas private and secure. And the outcome was that they were able to really quickly pivot to this virtual event and gain an additional 700 attendees registered through the virtual attendee pathway. So what we're seeing with the pivot to virtual that a lot of organizations are making is that because you're removing barriers to attendance, cost, travel, things like that, you're seeing very high attendee rates for organizations that put on great events. People want to be part of that, even virtual setting, to get that great content that they need. So while we're in the adapt phase right now, this is how we're thinking about the future. We believe we're going to move to an evolve phase soon. So the secret to the success in the evolve, the evolve phase is to really get a handle on your comprehensive event program. So this is when you can start planning the future and planning for the events you're hosting, the events you're attending, and internal events. So it's important to get your ducks in a row now. One of the things that CVent offers is the CVent Supplier Network, where we have over 300,000 venues and hoteliers on there that list their space and all the information about their venue and, and thousands and thousands of event planners and marketers source and send RFPs through our network. That gives us a great lens on what we're seeing in terms of sourcing volume and when it's coming back. And what we're seeing is that um, a lot of organizations are looking toward the back half of 2020 and definitely in 2021. So if you're thinking about postponing an event and moving one to the later part of this year or next year, you really should think about your future event space needs and think about doing venue sourcing now so you're not left out. We're, we're hearing from hoteliers and venues that are saying, you know, it's not about just getting demand down the lines. In some cases, it's about picking which events they want to hold because that's how much demand could come back and that's how much sourcing they're seeing for a specific venues. So don't be caught behind um, if everyone's rushing to have in-person events again and you can't find the space. So I want to highlight another C-Event customer, Lincoln Financial, that's kind of already moved to this Evolve phase. Um, you know, they, they had a challenge of, of really keeping, um, you know, their, their event program running and moving it to virtual and understanding what to postpone and planning ahead. And they were struggling with a clear line of sight into what was happening in real time. And, and by struggling, I mean, Lincoln Financial's um, executive team and others were saying, what's this going to mean when I don't have in-person events? But the good news is that the team that ran the events program had the answer. They used CVent to house all the data. Uh, they collaborated with their CVent um, customer service representative to, to talk about and build new event planning statuses for the team to use. They created a meeting cancellation and postponement form to make sure that when those requests were coming in, they could be managed centrally. Um, and they did this very, very quickly. So now, um, they have a, the ability to have a centralized report where they can report out to legal, procurement, marketing, all the stakeholders that need to be involved in a live event program, from booking the space or gathering the great results and using the great results from live events to even the legal terms. They now had all stakeholders aligned around one version of the truth. And they, were ability, they had the ability to plan ahead to the fall and reallocate unused space in clever ways. Um, and also push things out and postpone it and making sure they do that in a way that, that is financially um, responsible and financially advantageous. Um, so they were really able to manage through a, a crisis quickly. And while they're also adapting there, you can see they're evolving too. And they're setting themselves up for success by looking ahead, which is key to this evolve phase that we're talking about. And the third phase that we can't wait to happen is when live events come roaring back. And this is when we're going to have to accelerate our live event program. So this is going to be very important then that you have all the tools in place to quickly move fast. Do you have the, um, the, the control to allow a meeting request to come up quickly and be approved and be executed? Um, are you thinking about what new events might be like? 
you know, one of the things that the C event that we're looking at is things like contactless check-in. Um, you know, the days of everyone checking in on an iPad and touching the same spot over and over might be gone, um, or at least um, changed quite a bit. So what about printing badges from a mobile device or printing badges using things like, um, uh, you know, facial recognition and biometrics and things like that. So I, we're encouraging organizations to think about the future of the events program they're going to run and making sure that they're thinking about things like space planning even um, if, uh, you know, there's more social distancing that goes on. I mean, obviously, if social distancing stays around for a long time, that has a profound impact on people getting back together. But there could be things around how the food is set up and buffets and other things that, that need to be modified based on guidance around social distancing and space and those sorts of things. Um, so one of the things that we're recommending is when you are ready to accelerate things, um, take advantage of things like virtual site visits. Um, you know, we've, we've mapped with Cvent social tables about 3 billion square feet of space. And a lot of the venues and hoteliers on the Cvent supplier network have diagrams of their space. So you can, in effect, take a virtual site visit if you can't jump on a plane and get there way ahead of time. So if your event program is coming roaring back, you know, in nine months and you want to do a lot of site visits now, but you're restricted travel-wise, think about a virtual site visit. So hopefully this framework of let's adapt right now, let's evolve how we're going to, to do things, and let's be set up to accelerate at the right time is something that you can use and embrace inside your organization. So one thing I want to talk about are lessons learned from 2008 and 2009. That was the last time the world went through a really big financial crisis. And that one was admittedly different in that that was about really fundamentally a financial situation that constrained budgets. This one's a little different in that it's about people physically being together. But still, the lessons we learned then was that a lot of organizations took the easy way out and said, you know what, I'm gonna cut my live in-person event program because it's a big spend and it's easy to, to see that spend and I'm having a hard time really understanding what I'm getting out of my event program. Well, we've come a long way since 08 and 09 in terms of technology, in terms of looking at events and how they pay off from a marketing perspective or from an internal perspective, in terms of engaging our employees and training them better. So we have a lot better handle on the ROI of events now than we did then. And that's going to be important because what happened even back then was organizations end up cutting off one of their best lead channels and they realized a little too late that they cut to the bone and they shouldn't have cut live in-person events because they're one of the most qualified, best tactics for driving leads and engaging their employees. So what we learned is that using the tools you have right now to prove the value of your in-person event program is a great step to take so you can fight off the urge to cut to the bone on your live event program. So we just want to caution the industry not to overreact and say, you know what, virtual is great. Let's just continue doing that and nothing but that. Virtual is going to have a play. It's a very good tactic, but also in person is always going to be one of the best things you can do because you're together, face to face, talking to people, getting business done, and that's unparalleled in its effectiveness. So some advice going forward. It's important to stay calm and be flexible, but don't cut corners. And that's where that system of record comes in, to have the technology to really understand your in-person event program, how it's changed now, what it might look like over the next two or three quarters, and what it might look like when it comes roaring back. But also be realistic and ask for help. Talk to the people in your network. Talk to Cvent. Talk to um, the agencies you work with. Um, ask for help. You know, we're doing virtual meetups at C-Event. We're just getting the industry together to, to talk on specific topics. And we think that's important. So ask for help and, and let's network together and let's band together and let's solve the issues we have right now. Let's get through this. And, and we all can't wait for a day when we can be back together in Frankfurt for a 15,000 person event. And let's hope that day is not too far off. So we will get through this. There will be a light at the end of the tunnel. There's maybe a flicker or two now, but let's hope that light at the end of the tunnel comes sooner rather than later. 
And thank you for your time and I'll now take questions. Thank you so much, Patrick. What a wonderful ending. That's super positive. For those of you, we've got a couple of minutes that we're going to ask some questions that are coming through. Thank you all for your questions. Patrick, thank you so much for that uh, presentation. I know there was so much more to say. Um, and sure. yes, I think we're all agreeing that we cannot wait until we meet in person. But we have had a couple of questions on the Crowd Compass app. Great. Uh, a question for you. As a hotelier, can we upload visual site tours in the Cvent hotel profile? Many thanks with a big strong emoticon there that they're fighting through. <laughs> they're fighting through. Um, yeah, depending on what type of profile you have, you have the ability to do lots of things to showcase your property. So what I would say is um, anyone who's interested in doing that, please contact us and we can work closely with the hoteliers to do that. But one of the things that we're really focused on is helping the industry navigate through this and doing all we can to help hoteliers and venues, even if they're event customers or not, uh, navigate through this in the Cvent supplier network and maximizing your profile is a good way to do that. And it's the time now, I'm guessing, that we do have a little bit more time. I know some people are busier than others, obviously, but this is the time to really investigate that technology and make sure it's working for you. Absolutely. Big question for you. I'm not sure, you know, this is the big question. Uh -oh. Do you think event budgets are going to be cut in the long term? Um, I really do not, um, especially because at the end of the day, I think everyone realizes that when you're cut off from people and you can't even go to a restaurant, um, you know, that, that you really want to um, have that kind of interaction with people and you just want to be with others. And I think we found time and time again that nothing's more powerful than face to face and meeting in person and shaking a hand and breaking bread or doing an elbow bump, whatever we're doing now. Um, but it's, it's going to come back. And, and I think what, what's going to happen is um, people are going to realize that and the companies and organizations that realize early on that face-to-face -face is something that's absolutely critical and gets ahead of the game, they're going to have the best space. They're going to have the best opportunity to do this. And others that don't are going to be behind on leads like we talked about in the presentation. But I don't think event budgets are going to get cut because Nothing is going to replace the value of face-to-face. -face. I think we see that in spades, although I do believe that virtual events do have a role to play um, in the future in a smart way in an events program. How do you see international events being affected by the travel bans and how long for crystal ball time again? Yeah. So um, I think international events, certainly um, everyone's going to be a little leery of travel for a while. Um, but I think once the airlines do their safety measures and once we have you know, some of the, the testing going on and the ability to say you, you got on this plane or you entered this event, we did a temperature check and you're okay. I think that'll help um, people, I think, get more comfortable with traveling. One of the things we look at in the C-Vent Supplier Network is um, we have 300,000 venues on there and so much businesses transacted a year, almost 18 or 19 billion last year. We're looking at that for sourcing patterns and we're finding that there is a lot going on in early 2021, even at the end of this year. But especially early 2021, there's a lot of RFPs being transacted and a lot of demand. So that's why if you're holding a big event and it's going to be in the first half of next year, you should really get moving now and work on that RFP and get with the hotelier. So crystal ball time, if you look at the trends in the industry, we do believe that, you know, the first half of next year, things should be in much better shape. 